spectrum, which doesn't make us any different than the rest of you, except for now you're obligated to laugh, and I'm up to date on all my vaccinations. <laughs> now, it's interesting, though, when I was diagnosed, we really only had two specifications. We had autism and Asperger's, and what I had was Asperger's. But in the recent edition of the DSM, which, for those of you that don't know, the DSM is basically a compendium of diseases, their symptoms, and their treatments. They removed Asperger's from the DSM and just made it the spectrum. So I went from having Asperger's to having nothing and that takes away half my comedy routine. I'm now in what I like to call disability limbo where we know something's wrong with me but we just no longer know what. <laughs> Honey, there's something wrong with our child. I know, Preston, but what? What? I don't know, but I feel like we had the answer years ago. <laughs> now, being autistic does have some perks. I have a few superpowers. One of which is I have the ability to make anyone around me a sudden expert in autistic social behavior. So much so that I've had people argue with me over my own personality. I'll give you a little bit of background about myself. I graduated from Texas Tech, and just like any other self respecting oh, right. in this day and age, I got a job at Target. I'm helping a guest one day, happen to mention I'm on the job search, and it's hard when you're on the spectrum. And he says, well, you're in the wrong job field. Uh, yes, sir, I know. I'm applying for a lot of search engine optimization, digital market. Well, you should be an accountant, because you autistic people are so good with numbers. Jesus Christ. So I got to join the minority club and can ask, what do you mean, you people? <laughs> I tell them, well, sir, I'm really not that much better with numbers than anyone else. Well, you, uh, you have a concrete skill, and I've never worked in construction. Well, you're not really autistic, are you? I had another lady during the Christmas break ask about the return policy, so I tell her, 30 day return policy, so you have until December 50th. Yeah, it usually takes them a few seconds too, don't worry. This one lady just looks at me like she knows something I don't, like there's a joke I haven't been let in on, she just leans in. Are you on the spectrum? <laughs> okay, first off, ma'am, you cannot just ask people if they're on the spectrum. Second off, how'd you know? I said, well, my son's on the spectrum, and I think that's the kind of joke he'd make. I think it's one of those things where if you know, you know, but if you don't, you don't. I guess that's why only half the people laugh. Have people try and build that relationship with me all the time. Oh, you're on the spectrum? My neighbor's son is on the spectrum. Maybe you know each other. Like we're just connected through this wireless network, probably sponsored by the spectrum. Yeah. Now, if there's one thing that I can say it does suck about being autistic, it's dating. In fact, uh, I've only ever had one girlfriend, but she was Canadian, so after the exchange rate, it's sort of like nobody's ever loved me. <laughs> now, men, we're naturally oblivious creatures as is. We have what I like to call three layers of oblivion. This is how many hints a woman has to drop before the man finally gets it. You might start off at level one, you might start innocuous, you might say something like, Oh, hey, Trey, I was just thinking about you the other day. This might tell a normal, well-adjusted person, such as yourself, to say, why, I was thinking about you, too. This just tells me, as an autistic person, to say, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, that little awkward silence right there, no, 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 just buffering. <laughs> then you get to level two. This is where you get a little more forceful, a little more hints, say, we should hang out sometime. The well-adjusted man says, yes, we should, and makes a date. Little old me says, yes, we should, and buffers. <laughs> you say that, but it's true. Yep. <laughs> Level three. This is where any other well-adjusted man finally gets it, and you say, what are you doing later? The well-adjusted man says, why? Taking you to dinner, of course. This is where I lay out my entire itinerary of playing Mario Kart for three hours and watching Netflix until I pass out. Oh my God, <laughs> now, autistic people, we have an extra two layers of oblivion. Ladies, if you get to these levels, bless your patience, I swear we're worth it. Level <laughs> four, this is where you drop the strongest hint you can. You might say something like, Trey, I got a new bed. Would you like to help me break it in? 
I think, oh, <laughs> you're an insomniac and you don't want people to know. <laughs> so we skip straight to level five and you say, no, Trey, I want you to take me back to my place and ride me like a cowboy. <laughs> oh. Oh. We were both pretty disappointed when I showed up with a saddle. <laughs> That's all I got for you, folks. Yeah, Trey! Woo!